Hey everyone, Courant here welcoming you back to Tales of the Abyss. In the last episode, Ash and company went through the Orshan Cavern to try to figure out what the heck Van was doing and his evil dastardly plans. Then we ended up having ourselves quite the pitched encounter against the Ancelo Polyp who almost wiped me out. In this episode, we are back with Luke, who has just gotten his hair cut and resolved that he was going to change himself. He was going to make himself a better person one step at a time, and Tyr's going to be there with him to make sure that he doesn't screw up. So, yeah, we have Luke, we have Tyr, and, well, we can go ahead and go. Now, we are, of course, back in Yulius City, so we got to go do a couple things while we're here. Not too terribly much, but a couple of things. First off, let's actually go north into a room that we could not go in as Ash, because Ash basically said, man, what's the point? We, however can actually do something with it. What's this? Ah, this is the roster. It contains a list of everyone living in Aldrin. Oh, but it's missing some data. Say, Luke, I'm sorry to bother you with this, but could you help fill in the roster information? Sure, but what do I do? Every time you meet someone significant, just write down their information with this item. So we get the character disc. If you do that, next time we open this book, information about the new people will automatically be added. It's not our most important priority, so just do it when you think of it. I'll go ahead and enter our own information right now. But I'm a replica. But you're still a resident of this world. Yeah. And when she says, oh, let's do it when we think about it, she means we'll just pretty much do it automatically. You can look in it, pretty much what this is, is this pretty much just showing the pictures of the main characters, costumes that they have and whatnot. For Luke, for example, all we really have is his first costume as a Duke's son, and then his title as replica model, which shows him with his haircut. When we get other costumes later on in the game, you will see them reflected in here, and you can go back and look at them at any time. But really, that's about the only point there is to this, so not a big deal. If you want to look at other characters in the game and see their models, that's fine, of course, obviously, but not a huge deal right now. While we're in here, though, let's go ahead and pick up Sild Forte, which is another capacity core. This capacity core, as we, of course, use Luke as our model here, Sild Forte ups physical and phonic defense. So this is good if... If you have a character that really needs that, and exclusively that, say somebody like Luke maybe whose attack stats are already pretty good and you want to work on his defense, I don't particularly like using this capacity core too much because the, really the best person that would be for would be Luke. However, I want Luke on a capacity core that has enhancements so that he can get his ad skills faster. So I typically don't use this one that much, but if you want to, obviously, <laughs> be my guest. All right, so we've got that taken care of. There's a couple of other things we can do here in Yulia City while we're roaming around in the interest of side questy type pursuits. One of those is to continue the Yulia City allocations that we started with Ash in the party because, well, our supplier is back. Uh-oh, this is bad. What am I going to do? What's wrong? Oh, it's you, Tyr. Well, actually, when I went to replenish supplies, I forgot to buy rice. Mayor Teradora was going to get mad at me for forgetting again. You never change, do you? How much did you need? You'll give me some? If I could get at least five sets, I think I can cover up the fact that I forgot. Eek. Alright, that's fine. You can be pretty harsh. Wait, do I not have enough rice? Thought I did. That gummit, let me check. I could have sworn I did. I hadn't used that much when I was cooking. I have one. Oh well, good job me. Okay. This is actually this will be up for a little bit. Uh so it's not a huge deal. But you will want to try to take care of this as soon as possible. Now I still have the five maces, so the third part of the quest, which we can do relatively soon, we actually can go ahead and hang on to those and do that. Now, the only issue with this and the issue that I have run into, it would appear, is that you cannot actually buy rice from this idiot here, sadly. You can buy some other foodstuffs, but you can't buy rice, which is too bad, because it would be the main way to do it. 
There will be opportunities, but, well, yeah, they're going to be a little few and far between. Oh, well. Uh, one other thing we can do, though. I want to go in this room down here and see if we can talk to this lady over here. I believe we can. Okay, I've got to go upstairs and cue a scene, and then we can talk to her. All right. But we will need to go down here to fulfill a quest or to do a quest sort of thing before we make our way out of this place. Hello? Ah, uh, yes, yes, phone stone room, blah blah de blah The funny thing is, they keep saying, well, okay, only a few people can get in, but then we can just sort of waltz Cheer, in. Here, I was looking for you, about the third phonic hymn. Oh, so he's recovered? Layla, so has the third hymn symbol been discovered? What's the third hymn? One of those phonic hymns you use? So he doesn't know about them. The phonic hymns I use are Yulia's hymns. There are seven altogether. Oh, so the third of those seven? Wait, you always just use two of them. I don't understand the symbolism of the others. Yulia's hymns are useless with only the melody. If you don't understand the meaning and wisdom in the hymns, they're just songs. Oh, that's right. The symbol of the third hymn. There was a hidden page in a book Van left behind. It might be written there. When you have a chance, stop by my place and take a look. Phonic hymns sound pretty tough. Yes, the symbols are very difficult. I know all but the third and the fifth. But so far, I only understand the first and second. So if you don't know and understand the symbols, they really are just ordinary songs. Actually, all seven of Yulia's hymns sung consecutively form another phonic hymn. It's called the Grand Phonic Hymn, and it works even if you don't understand its symbolism. The hymn itself is the symbol of the covenant. The whole covenant with Lorelei, Grand Phonic Hymn? What power does that have? It's said that the Grand Phonic Hymn and the Key of Lorelei together can summon Lorelei. That sounds amazing! Yes, but the Key of Lorelei has been lost, and I don't know the seventh hymn. So it may not mean much in the end. Ch cheer up! I don't know about the Grand Phonic Hymn, but your first and second hymns have really helped. That's good enough. Luke, th thank you. All right, so now we can go downstairs and get that Phonic Hymn. Oh, by the way, that's the first time that Luke's complimented anybody, I think. Pretty close anyway, so a mark, I guess, of how he has started to at least try to change anyway. So let's talk to her now. I've been waiting for you. All of, what, 30 seconds? Good job. What's the book Van left behind? It's just an ordinary book on phonic arts, but there was a hidden page at the end. Here's a copy of it. I don't know what it means, but I thought you might... This is... Va... Le... Zwe... Tue... Mother... Understanding, spreading through the land of Rugnica, the magnificent angel's voice. What's going on? Quiet. Tear is meditating. It looks like that really was the symbol of the hymn. Now I understand. This is the third hymn. So we get a new ability for Tear, Holy Song, which is actually pretty good because, if I'm not mistaken, it is a combination of a healing effect and protection for your characters, which is awesome. Were you able to figure out the hidden whatever it was? Yes. Congratulations, Tyr. Thank you. Do you mind if I keep this copy? There's information here about the symbolism in the other hymns as well. Though I don't yet know enough to understand them. Be my guest. I'm sure it'll come in useful eventually as you grow stronger. Yes. Thank you. Alrighty, let's take a look at Holy Song then, shall we? Alright, Holy Song, hello. Increases attack and defense of all allies and restores a small amount of HP. That effect, actually, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can attach capacity core, not capacity core, a phone slot chamber to it, rather, good grief, to that one. Let's see, where are you? Hello. Okay, let's see, increase effectiveness, increase the length of effectiveness, reduce the amount of TP. I want to... No, I don't want to do that one, actually. I want to... 
Let's see, I want to increase effectiveness. Yes. And then I think I want to also do that for first aid. Let's see. Yeah, that'd be the best choice for first aid, too. All right, so go ahead and do that. And then resurrection. I want to use a grass chamber with resurrection, but I don't want to do that yet because the other one I want to put on... I want to put on Guy, because he needs to have that stealing effect for later, especially boss battles. Alright, so now that we've gotten that taken care of and I have completely dropped the ball on my rice, let's go ahead and talk to Teodoro and see if we can get our way out of here. Hello, Grandpa Mayor, how you doing? Oh, Tyr, it's you. And this must be... Uh, pleased to meet you. I'm Luke. I'm you! You, stay quiet. I, um, I apologize for, for what happened at Axarius. Ah, you're the Luke replica. I see. You really do look the same. Grandfather! Oh, I'm sorry. There's no need for you to apologize to us for Axarius, however. What do you mean? The fall of Axeriuth is written in Yulia's score. It occurred because it was meant to. What are you saying? I've never heard that. That makes it the same as Hod. It's part of the closed score. Only those of maestro rank or higher know of it. If you knew about it through the score, why didn't you try to stop it? Luke, I'm surprised to hear someone from the Outer Lands say such a thing. A calm, orderly life in accordance with the score is the way of the Order of Lorelei. Well, well, yeah, but... Why are people read the score on their birthday each year? To learn of the next year and accept the possibilities it holds. Then why didn't you inform the world about Exarius' destruction? Yeah, if you'd let everyone know, people wouldn't have had to die. That's the problem. When faced with a score of death, people become unable to live peacefully. Of course, sir. Nobody wants to die. That's not acceptable. Yulia read prosperity for Aldrin's in the score. If we don't move history down that path, we'll lose the prosperity we are promised. We are the Watchers who guide the Outer Lands to prosperity, based on Yulia's score. The Order of Lorelei is a tool for that purpose. And that's why Grand Maestro Mose held Phone Master Ion and tried to cause a war? Master Van knew about the score when he took me to Axarius? That's correct. You told me neither Malkuth nor Kim Laska listened when you warned them about Hod. Was that a lie? I'm sorry. You were young. I didn't want to tell you the truth. But Van knows the truth. Then my brother is planning to take revenge on the world. He said that a world shackled to the score is better off destroyed. Tyr, you're mistaken in thinking that Van is trying to destroy the world. It's true that there was a time when Van hated the score after what happened to Hod. But now, he's doing an admirable job as an observer. Admirable? Letting everyone in Axarius die was admirable? You're crazy. There's something wrong with all of you. Not at all. At the end of the sixth phone stone, Yulia's score reads thus. The land of Rugnica will be enveloped in war, and Malkuth shall lose territory. Kimlaska Lanveldir shall thrive, and this shall lead to unprecedented prosperity. We have watched all this time in order to bring that unprecedented prosperity to the Outer Lands. But Grandfather, Van is trying to cause St. Bina to fall. The battle will take place around it. St. Bina will not fall. It is not written in the score. Mayor Teodoro, it's time for the council meeting. I'll be right there. If you two are that worried, take the Yulia Road to the Outer Lands. See for yourself that your concern is groundless. Here, let's go back to the Outer Lands. We aren't going to accomplish anything here. Right, but before we go, there's something I want to get from my room, okay? Sh sure. All right, so we are not, we're not done here quite yet, almost. 
Where's your room, Tyr? It's the room you were sleeping in. The second floor on the house next door is my room. Oh. Then, that whole time, I was sleeping in Tyr's bed? Yep. Master, is something wrong? N no let's go. Yeah, congratulations. You uh, got into a woman's bed for the first time. Just maybe not quite in the way that anybody anticipated, perhaps. All we really need to do is just go back to Tears' room. Nothing particularly special about it, really. Just filling a hole or two before we get to leave for the Yulia Road. Van hated the score. He was always talking about it here in this room. He'd stand about where you are now and say he could never forgive a world that let Hod die. Why does he care so much about Hod? The Isle of Hod was Malkuth land, destroyed in the Hod War 16 years ago. It was our home. Hod fell into the Cliffoth, just like Exeriuth. Van and my mother, who was pregnant with me, fell into the Cliffoth. Van probably used a phonic hymn. Something happened before I went to the Outer Lands. Van returned to this city, something he didn't do very often. Ash seems to suspect something. Ash is still a bit dainty. He'll cause trouble if he learns that the people of the Outer Lands will be annihilated. Shall we have Singh keep tabs on him? Yes. I thought my brother was planning something terrible. At least that many people were going to die. I couldn't allow that to happen, even if Hod had been left to die because of the score. I swore I'd stop him. Even if it meant killing both of us. Tear. But it looks like I failed. I couldn't save Exeriuth. That's because I... I can't blame it all on you. I took an assignment in the Outer Lands in order to stop Van. You're strong. Am I? I wonder. Too strong. But thanks for telling me about all this. I think maybe I understand you a little better now. That's the first time you've ever thanked me for anything. Really? I'm so happy you two are growing close to each other. It's not like that. By the way, what did you come here to get? A book on phonology. I thought you would need it. Why? A hyper-resonance is caused by seventh phonons. I think this will help you learn to control them. Oh, thanks. All right, so we pick up principles of phonology, which is not something we can use directly, but it'll come in handy for a side quest or two. The Yulia Road is to the right of the meeting room. Let's go. All right, now we have everything taken care of in Yulia City. Well, with the exception of the rice, of course. So we can go ahead and get ourselves out of this place, finally! Took a little while, but, you know, it happens when you've got some good story-moving type stuff. Most importantly, we know a bit more about Van's ideas about the world, that he is fighting for a world that is not tied to the score in any way, which... This path connects to the Aramis Spring on the Padamian continent. That place is crawling with monsters. Are you ready? I sure hope so! Yeah, I'm ready. I'm scared! It'll be alright, Mew. Here we go. And after going into the Yulia Road, we get spit out at the very lovely Aramis Spring. Mew! Whoa! It dumped us out into the water! It's alright, you won't get wet. How come? Apparently, the force from the Sephiroth Spout pushes the water aside. 
Those Sephiroth things sure are strong if they can lift the whole land into the sky. And I destroyed one of them. Standing around depressed isn't going to help anything. You're right. I came back here to do what I can. Man, I'm hopeless. Now, what I was going to say about the whole idea with Van and trying to end a world so dependent on the score, I can kind of understand where he's coming from. I mean, it's not a position without merit, because in Van's mind, a world that followed the score had basically destroyed his home, and naturally that would cause him to be bitter. I, I certainly would be. At the same time, though, I mean, what we're arguing with, though, was his means to go about doing this, to prosecute this end of his. And as it turns out, one of the things that we will be doing throughout the rest of the game is trying to find another way. It's about time you showed up, Luke. Hey, you cut your hair. Nice, clean cut. Looks good. It's just like I saw when I was connected with Ash. Guy waited for me. Guy. Huh? What is it? I... I'm not Luke. Jeez, I don't need you talking like Ash, too. But I'm a replica. So? That guy doesn't like to be called Luke anyway. I say take it. Take it? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. You sure have, though. You don't have to put yourself down so much. I'm not. It's just... Sure you are. Who cares about names at this point? You could at least look happy to see me after I went to the trouble of waiting here for you. You're right. Thanks. Luke said thanks? <laughs> I love that face. <laughs> he says he's going to change. Looks like you never do. All right, so we got a new title for Guy out of it. Friend for life. And, of course, Guy is back in the party, which is fantastic. Let's make sure his equipment is good to go, and I think it pretty well is, although yeah, it never hurts to just check on things. Let's see. Now, there was the basil that I was going to go ahead and give him. Actually, I'm going to give Luke. Oh, my God. Big difference. Yeah, let's give that to Luke. I think we pretty well should be good to go, so let's go ahead and head on. And there's not all that many places we can really go here in Aramis Spring. It's a pretty brief spot. There's a couple of treasure areas that we can look for stuff in, but not a whole lot. I mean, we'll want to pretty well just course through this place. Shouldn't be too difficult. Now, you go down. Of course, this is going to reconnect the path if you want it to. So, not a huge uh, issue there. Now, I think you have to go down, though, if you want to get tr more treasure. But first, let's go ahead and go after these guys, the water spirits and the water bats. Let's focus on, I think, the spirits first. Hello, spirits, who are resistant to physical and water attacks, which is not good, but has a weakness to fire, which it's kind of too bad we don't have Guy or uh, Jade, rather, in the party to uh, try to take advantage of that. You notice these guys are magic casters, so be careful. Uh, if one of them starts casting at you, they are probably going to hit Luke with it. Or, well, generally they will hit Luke. Okay, uh, as the magic bats, or water bat rather, smacks me upside the head, let's go ahead and take a look at him. He is a lot weaker, naturally. Has much more in terms of weaknesses than the others do, so that is always good news. Okay, all right, let's, let's take this last one out. And then I will equip huh, Guy with that last capacity core that we have. And I can't cook spaghetti. All right, I can't cook chicken, though. That's nice. Now, the capacity core, or not capacity core, uh, the phone slot chamber, rather. Sorry. Let's go ahead and put that on. I believe it's Void Tempest. Yes. Okay. Definitely equip that. And make sure, if you can, if you're controlling Guy, try to use that attack as much as you can. He will use it a pretty good bit on his own, so no need to really worry about that. Let's see, I need to... Yeah, I think I do need to go back down to work my way... No, never mind, that works this way around later. Forget that. Blah. We'll come back to that path later. If you wanted to use that save point, you can. I'm obviously not going to right now. 
we will simply continue forward, where we will have more conversations. <laughs> We're friends, right? Oh, wait. I'm your servant. Sorry. I'm a replica. I'm not your master. It's not like I was acting friendly towards you just because you were my master. What? You're you, and Ash is Ash. Replica or whatever. You're real to me. Oh, very tender from you, guy. All right, let's probably... Well, good, I can skip him. We do have another new enemy waiting for us down here, I believe. Yep, hello. We have... Iron Crabs! Oh, joy. Very physically defending, I'm sure. Let's go ahead and confirm that. Yes, yes he is. And tons of HP, so you'll definitely want to be careful. Actually, probably want to take out your faster attackers first. Oh, that, I was not supposed to do that. Okay, I meant to dodge around at that point. That clearly did not work very well. But yeah, the crabs are what you would normally expect from a crabby character, I suppose. In Tales of the Abyss, they are very physically, very physically defendant. A lot of cover to them. Although, oh god, uh, okay, they're about to rip me apart if I'm not careful. Whoop, dodge, me dodge. There we go, that'll work. Just stay dead. But not too bad. None of the enemies in here, of course, are really all that terrible. It's just trying to get through those physical defenses to really be able to do much of anything. Ooh, silver mail, that should be good for... Actually, might be good for either of them. Let's see who needs the most... Not you, you. Oh, you've already got it. Never mind. All right, hello, Luke. You can go ahead and put that on, please. Now, this is the area where we had looked at earlier, which heads up over eventually. Do you remember? It was after the kidnapping, so I guess it was right after you were born. What? Did something happen? I asked you if it was hard not having your memory. You said, you can't go forward if you keep looking back. So you didn't need a past. That's what you told me. <laughs> Man, I was stupid. I did not need one. I didn't have one. Actually, I thought it was pretty insightful. Nice. Another nice little tidbit there, if you wish. And we can head over here to fight, I believe, our last unique enemy in this dungeon, which is right, the Corintis. Let's go ahead and check you out here. And I'm also going to take the opportunity to go ahead and actually use the special, which we can do if we are, actually, if we pull off a Mystic Art attack. Hold X when you get done with the Mystic Art, or the Phonic Art, and you will hit a Mystic Art here, just like so. It can definitely come in handy if you're wanting to take out an enemy quickly. That pretty much took the Corinthus right out of play, which is nice. Especially since these are fairly, they have a fairly big, or fairly good fortitude to them. I thought I did pretty well there. You move too much. You can't think about your reaction, just react. You never let up. That is a little bit of a twist on the older, the older exit line, I guess, that we had had. And you notice also, using a Mystic Art in battle ups your grade, which is definitely good when you have hard mode turned on, so you get the 25% uh, upgrade with that as well. Definitely helps out if you are trying to grade grind, I suppose, although you really shouldn't do that until probably the end of the game. Hello, Panacea Bottle, we definitely need you. Let's just go ahead and continue on from there. All right, I was actually, I think, slightly mistaken. I thought the Corinthus was the final enemy of this area. I, it turns out I was mistaken. So, Mia Culpa, we now have the Murphish. Hello, Murphyish. Go ahead and check you out here. You are, you've got a lot of HP. I didn't expect you to have quite that much. Obviously resistant to water because, well, it is a Mur enemy. Durr. Ow. And apparently hits rather hard, too. But if you get him tossed around, shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead and take out the bats. Thank you. And then we should be able to pretty well finish this all out. I want to borrow from the healing circle. Thank you very much. That is one good thing about the AoE healing is, of course, you can run into it and take care of whatever you need to do. Hey, good job, guy. Didn't realize you were that close to leveling up. 
All right, so now we've got all the unique enemies out of here. We actually don't have too terribly much left in this place. So we just move through here, and I think we got a couple more rooms. All this must have been hard on you. I'm in no position to talk. Everybody died because of me. Part of that's my fault, though. You didn't have anything to do with it. I'm partly responsible for raising you from a blank slate to a selfish, spoiled kid. Huh? From the start, when you didn't remember how to walk, or didn't know, I guess, I was the one who looked after you. I've really learned my lesson. All of this, really, you notice, is just little tidbits sort of addressing the idea that Luke and Guy obviously grew up together, but Guy was one of the ones responsible, of course, for taking care of Luke and really teaching him about the world. So everybody's pretty much just busy tossing blame at each other, or at themselves mostly, for what happened in Exeriu, and I don't think I can avoid you, so let's take you out. And we can, of course, continue forward. We've got one other battle, I think. How should I try to make up for Exeriu? That's a difficult question. It's not something you can just apologize for. Yeah, apologizing is important, but it can be hard on the one you apologize to. Why? The greater the loss, the more people need someone to hate for it, you know? You might feel better, but the ones you apologize to can't just say, okay, no problem. Perhaps you should spend your life bearing that responsibility, never forgetting. No, that's too vague. Maybe I should never be happy. Now, I know that's not right. Are you sure? I mean, I wasn't even supposed to be born. And then I destroyed Exeriuth. Okay, stop. Stop. No more of that. Hearing you talk like that is just annoying. Guy, Luke's thinking seriously about the issue. Just help people. Use the rest of your life to make everyone in the world happy. There's no way I can do that. I know that, you idiot. I mean, you need to put that much effort into it. Oh, right. I get it think we've got that one more battle there with you see the merfish lurking around what you actually want to do though before leaving is go up here first because there is a treasure you can pick up toward the end of this this outside area that we're coming to is actually the final area of the Aramis spring so we're pretty much at the finish now this cave here You'll want to open it up, of course, to get the treasure, but you'll also want to open this area up for a later side quest purpose. Let's see, the Nimble Rapier, Luke does not have that equipped, and it doesn't really matter. Guy's already got it, so it's just sail bait, which is nice, of course. But you'll want to get that if you are going for all the treasure, and there is going to be a side quest involving this area up here a little bit later on. But really, aside from that, we are pretty much done with this area, and if I can move around the merfish, or watch the crab jump into my way, dang it. We can make our way out of here and be done with the Aramis Spring. Well, we'll run into somebody on the way out, actually. Whoa! Jade? Oh, good. I was afraid I might have missed you. Colonel, what are you doing here? I have a favor to ask of Guy. He said he'd wait for Luke here, so I came looking for him. Me? Moses captured Ion and Natalia. What? Oh, Luke, you're here too. You got a problem with that? Not especially. Anyway, if we don't rescue them, there's going to be trouble. There aren't any Malkuth forces nearby, so I thought I'd ask for Guy's help. What do you mean by trouble? With the disappearance of Axeriuth, Kim Loska has begun making preparations for war. They probably intend to use Natalia's death as justification. That's right. The people of the Outer Lands don't know why Xeriuth disappeared. Ion was wary of this and returned to the Order to issue a decree. He was captured upon his arrival. Okay, Luke. We're going to rescue them. There's no way we're letting a war happen, right? Yeah. Should we head to Doth? Yes, that's the idea. In case you were unaware, Doth is southeast of here. I hope you won't get too lost or slow us down too much. Luke, it's not easy to regain trust once you've lost it. I know. Well, he does now, at least. But with that, Jade is back into the party, which is fantastic. Definitely good, because we've got the original four back. And if I could 
Sorry, I thought that treasure was there for some reason. I don't know why. Pick up the treasures here. We got one on this side and one on the other. The yellow ribbon is primarily good for Annis, really. And then the other treasure is kind of hiding over here. It is a pineapple gel, which is good for everybody. But with that said, we can go ahead and step onto the world map, and we will be, as Jade mentioned, very close to Doth, which is our ultimately next destination. We get new map music along with it, as you notice, and a new skit, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and end things off here. Next time on Tales of the Abyss, we're going to head into Doth to see if we can rescue Ion and Natalia and go through the Oracle Headquarters, which is a kind of an irritating dungeon. So thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see y'all later.